Well, gentlemen, another episode, and today we have an extremely special guest, somebody who I met a couple of years ago. He's a big, tremendous help to me, and has been a help to a lot of people in the community. Today, I'd like to welcome Dr. K to the podcast. It's an welcome. honor to be welcome. here. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having me, y'all. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is, I, I've, I've had so many things I want to ask you about, want to talk about. Oh, I'm, I am so excited about this. This is going to be great. I'm looking forward to it, too. Very much so. Yeah, I have a thousand questions in my mind that I'm currently queuing up. And we also you talked, too, about two and a half yeah. years ago. And that yeah. also changed my life. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was insane. Okay, cool. It was during my big Genshin days where I was losing it. Oh, oh God, that, that was sense. not a yeah, good doc, time, yeah. was it? Yeah, no, Dr. K came and he just mm -hmm. provided me clarity. It was awesome. This is my oh, first wow. time talking to him, but I'm mostly excited to talk about games because we were talking about Souls and games. He's played old yeah. games before the podcast started. Yeah, we were having a, a, a conversation about Sekiro, and is it is it truly a perfect <laughs> game or not? And, uh, yeah, I mean... He says no. Well, it, he does. But... <laughs> You said it, no. it, 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 it can it can okay. it can still be a perfect game. I just chose not to like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep in mind, the first time that I played Sekiro, I didn't even get like you 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 stopped at Owl. Yeah. Like I got you know the guy with the spear that you have to learn to like stomp on the spear with. Yeah. Yeah. Like the first boss or something, right? Second boss, something like that. I haven't played the boss. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, rage quit the game at that point. Really? So yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, don't don't feel bad about it. But uh, I, I wanted to ask, like, obviously, you know, getting into like gaming and seeing games like Dark Souls. Do you feel like games like that are in any way sort of like a a, a metaphor? Because you were saying that you loved a lot of the lore in Dark Souls. Do you feel like it's a metaphor at all of like kind of the human condition? Oh my like god, that? that's such I mean, a big question. <laughs> so like, I'm, I, I have so many things. Like, if, oh, I'm if, not even. If it is a metaphor for the human condition, yes. we're screwed. <laughs> like, it's to be very clear. fucking bleak. Yes, but I, I mean, I, I think that I think that if you really look at it, right, there's got to be some weird subconscious stuff going on right. in Miyazaki's head. Yeah, he, I remember reading some stuff about how he thinks about game design, mm -hmm. and he like actually is like kind of sadistic about it. He's like, I want to make people suffer. I think yep. he unironically said one time that he wanted losing in the game to feel like balding as an adult male. Wow. wow, something what? like that. Like, yeah, it was something ridiculous. And like, I took that personally. And so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> it was a good time. But I mean, I, I think that like, what do you think like compels people to be so uh, like attached to the lore in Dark Souls? Because you see this like with other games a little bit, but like Dark Souls has like such a massive emphasis on the lore. People are making like, you know, videos with millions of views. Is it because it's hard to get or what? Well, so I, I think that if you look at gaming and just yeah. society in general, like we're getting shallower, right? So like it, w it used to be blogs and then it was tweets and, mm -hmm. and it used to be YouTube videos and like video essays and now it's like shorts and TikTok. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there's a large percentage of the population that doesn't like the shortening and simplification and shallowing of stuff. Yeah. And because the thing about Dark Souls lore is like not everyone is into it. Right. Uh -huh. But the people who are into it, like really crave it. Oh, yeah. And and it's it's really interesting because I watched like lore videos for Dark Souls one, two and three. Yeah. And then I understood enough about how they put the story together mm -hmm. to where the, th the cool thing about Elden Ring is like I decided I'm not going to watch any lore videos. Oh, I'm no. going to figure out for myself. Oh, my God. And so it's actually like sleuthing. And this is okay. the problem is that if you look today, like if you look at WoW, for example, like you go to WoW Wiki and everything's on there. There's no discovery well, in games. Not anymore. only is everything on there, but the pre the, the future patch has been data mined from the public <laughs> test ground. Yeah, absolutely. And all of the cinematics, the voice lines have been put on there and you already know who's gonna yeah. die. So so like discovery, like back when I, you know, when I was growing up, we were talking about the NES. Yeah. And like so there there wasn't the internet. So you right. had to games were full of discovery. Like every game you played, you yep. have to figure things out. What was the first game you looked up stuff for on, on, on the internet? Um, maybe like Valkyrie Profile, if you guys even know what that what is. What the I have fuck no is that? that? <laughs> yeah, what, I have no idea. What system is that on? PlayStation. PlayStation? What? Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. I never won. played PlayStation. JRPG. Yeah. Fantastic game. Really? Okay. I was Super Mario World, and I remember looking it up in like 1999 or something like that, 2000. And it is so crazy to think that like now, like I was looking up cheat codes. I didn't know anything about the game. And like now it's literally people's job to teach you how to play a video game. That is nuts. So cool. Yeah. I also, love it. Also, some people just play video games for a living. And they don't even do it very well either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. 
yeah no I, I think it's incredible i mean like just seeing the way that uh that gaming has evolved and I, I think also like gaming has been and i'm sure you'll attest to this i think gaming is a little bit of a uh there's a lot of people that are not in like really great head spaces with gaming especially on like streams and like youtube etc and yeah yeah i i don't really know like do you think that gaming causes that or people that are like that are attracted to gaming because of the escapism or, or where do you think that, that falls? I, I think it's actually a little bit of both. Okay. So if you just look at the research, we know that video games have addictive qualities like you yeah. can do like brain scans and people will have done these studies. And what's really interesting, by the way, is that if you do studies on the addictive potential of video games, it's the denial of reward that is actually addicting, uh -huh. which sort of makes sense. Like, why would people like play the Elden Souls? Ring story? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like right? Goals and Genshin and Star Rail. <laughs> yeah, right. So gotcha games. It's oh, it's yeah. it's so the human brain, we're like actually primed for this, where if something is difficult, we place more value on it. Right. And so even if you look at like the normal people, right, they value things that are harder to achieve. Oh yeah. And so we have like social status around like being a doctor, for example. Graduating from Harvard. Graduating yeah. from Harvard, <laughs> um, things like that, right? And so the people are, and, and w the interesting thing is that we've sort of figured out, okay, if something is hard, it's worth more. Right. There's a really fascinating study actually done here, I think at UT, okay. where they took fraternities and they asked them, okay, how good is your fraternity? And what they sort of found is that people valued fraternities based on how bad the hazing was. I knew you were going to say that. And so there was one fraternity, which is a crappy fraternity, which I shall not name. Okay. I've heard some crazy shit about doesn't fraternities. Doesn't give you connections or anything like that. Right. It's just a bunch of people who just. Yeah, this is know. not the Freemasons. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what they would do with their pledges is they'd strip them naked, tie them to, to a tree, and then pee on them. For what? what? Were they yeah. upside down? No, they were right side up. Okay, all right. Yeah. See, it's not that bad, guys. So, so you know, the shit that I've heard about fraternities doing is disgusting. Like there was even there was even a comment on our Patreon that I actually found this out about. Oh God. Which, by the way, thank y'all for supporting the Patreon. It's been great. Appreciate y'all. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's this thing called a, a soggy biscuit. Oh God, oh no! God, I don't no. even. Want should, I shouldn't talk about that. Should, I shouldn't oh. talk about that. No, Wait, I, I mean, don't. I'm, I want to know what this is. Well, have do you heard I, about that? I want to no, know. No, I have not this heard is? about a soggy biscuit. I've heard of Man. the term, so, but I don't know what it is. I, I assume it's not I, something I, that you dip I, in I your tea. I really hope that the researchers at UT don't either. <laughs> so there's this thing. The worst thing is, there's another thing called an elephant walk. Have you heard about that, that too? Nope. Okay, one of my brothers participated in that, so I know that one's real. But there's this other one called soggy biscuit that I found out the other day, and it's where. They're, they get four dudes, one to each side of a cracker, okay? And they all have to jerk off in front of each other, and they have to come on the cracker. And the person who can't do it has to eat it. I guess, like, <laughs> I guess in terms of fraternities, I mean, that one has got to be, like, way above the tree thing, right? I mean, like, nobody want to be in that one. Or everybody would, actually. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so so that go, going back to why people yeah, going play video back, games, yeah, going back <laughs> on point, uh huh, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah so 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 wh why, uh, you get yeah, so I, know. I think Red, I need dude. to like so alt F four here for a second, uh huh. Yeah. Well, well, it's like the the way that a, a lot of these uh, the way a lot of these games and everything work is that yeah, you're totally right. It's like I don't know how many times like if you ever played a game that's like an online game and people are like, man, I did this whenever it was hard. Or, oh, this is like, oh, I used to have this whenever it was hard to get. Now everybody gets it. It doesn't matter anymore. I hate that shit. Oh, I was totally one of those people. But, but dude, when I beat Millennia, yeah. you're like, yeah, well, it used to be harder. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck you want me to do? Yeah. You want to download a patch? Those people are so annoying. I get it's people who are like, don't use that weapon or it's cheating because I use one that was not as good as that one. Yeah. Yep. Like, bro. Yeah. Oh, who absolutely. Cares? People want People want you to go through that exact same thing. It's like, yeah, playing playing video games badly or playing video games without certain things. It's pretty much digital hazing to an extent, right? At least watching people uh, go through it. Yeah, it's exactly the same. Yeah, uh, clearly. And uh, no, I, I think that that's not really a surprise. People put like more value on that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, it like builds up in people's minds. But I, I wonder, like, I see a lot of conversation, especially now, about how video games are being used as like a replacement for like real life accomplishments. And I was wondering, like, why do you think that so many people are moving over to trying to accomplish things in video games whenever they can't do it or, you know, instead of doing it in real life? Well, so, OK, it, it really fascinating question. So let's just take a step back and understand a couple things about the brain. OK. 
So our brain has like different parts, right? And yeah. some parts can't tell the difference between certain things. Mm -hmm. So for example, like the more primordial parts, the reptilian parts of our brain, like adrenaline in a video game is the same as adrenaline in real life, right? Yeah, I know that. So, but the, so what, what basically happens when we play a game is some parts of our brain kind of get tickled and it's the <laughs> same as anything else, mm -hmm. okay? That's um, cute, yeah. like that. <laughs> <clears throat> and but the problem is that other parts do know the difference. So we know that like, you know, being number one on the ladder of a particular game. Well, not, now that may have some real world value, yeah. but, you know, accomplishing things in g games, we parts of us know that it's false. The right. problem is, if you think about how do game designers know what's fun, they know what's fun because these are the parts of the brain that like actually get activated. Yeah. So literally, it's no different to our brain, whether it's virtual or it's not virtual. Right. It's it's all it's kind of all the same, and so what what's happening is, and now we have this option where yeah. if you kind of think about success in the real world, like uh. you can play Dark Souls and you wipe and you wipe and you wipe, and eventually the game is designed for you to win. You're pro it's programmed to lose. Well, you no, know, actually, you're programmed to win. Well, right? well, well, I mean, like the the game is programmed to lose. You are yeah, programmed yeah. To win. The game it's is probably you're supposed to win in the end. Right. And now I've got a choice because if I go out and like let's say like I ask people out on dates, like I'm not guaranteed to win. Yeah. Right. So the real world, we have difficulty followed by reward. And basically, we know that the degree of dopamine release is mm -hmm. correlated with the degree of difficulty. Yeah. OK. That right? makes a lot of sense. And, and this is why easy games are boring. Why are they boring? Because they don't release any dopamine because there's no challenge involved. Yeah, of course. And, and so now what we sort of know is that, OK, so the harder it is, the more dopamine we get re released. This is why as society, we respect people for accomplishing things like winning the, at the Olympics. Yeah. Because it's harder. And now games have figured out how to tap into that. And so they sort of s trigger those same dopaminergic impulses based on the harder it is. Like, I remember when I beat Dark Souls 1 for the yeah. first time, like, you feel amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah. E even like beating like Iudex Gundir, like I beat Dark Souls 1, went straight into Dark Souls 3, and I was like, okay, I, I beat Gwyn, right? So I can beat the first boss, like, yeah, yeah. boss easy. I got my ass handed to me. <laughs> <laughs> he one-shot it, to be fair. Wait, which really? boss? Really? Ludex Gundir, the first boss. You one-shot that boss, didn't you? Which one? Which Soul one? Street, which one was that? I already don't first remember. First boss. What does he look like? The guy that, like, uh, he has the, the halibard, and, like, he, like, Wait, spears Wait, the, the crazy arm? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sick. Chad moves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I have a problem where th the bosses that people say, like, oh, this one's so hard, you're going to be for hours, is not hard. And then the ones were like, oh, this one's easy. Remember like, do you remember Moonlight, Moonlight Butterfly? Butterfly? Yeah, that was one of the hardest ones for me. Mm-hmm. Isn't Moonlight Butterfly is in Dark I'll Souls One. I don't remember. Who uh, remember, like you were in the forest, you went up the uh, that like castle, that dilapidated castle, and then like there was this butterfly, and it would shoot like these green things at you, and then you're it on a bridge. Yeah, yeah I, I think that was one of the ones that yeah. I thought was pretty. I, I sort of did pretty easily. I don't remember. Yeah, it was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. The, the thing about Dark Souls is that like your instinct is to run away, but that's always the wrong move. Stand your ground. Yeah, yeah. you can actually like DPS race like mm -hmm. some bosses. Yeah, you can 100. percent Absolutely, and, I learned and that's that. just not what you. Would expect right because mm -hmm. you're like a dude with a club but it's like no yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah my chat was so angry every time that worked and so yeah i understand it uh, do you think that like so you're saying that obviously like the harder games by the way did you see the video of the girl that can play elden ring with her brain waves no is that That's the nuts. vdr Paranormal. pad girl too no. oh uh, oh up. if she thinks certain things the patterns and uh, like there's like a sensor that she puts on her head it can play Elden Ring just simply with her brain. Like she, I think she beat Radon. Oh yeah, that. she would say like Radon? she would think of like, 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 waves, a, like an right? ocean wave to yeah. like do certain things. Yeah, it was incredible. That must be some kind of weird, but I'm super curious about that because yeah. while we can sort of do that with biofeedback, there's a lot of like, unless she's got like implants or something, there's a lot of no. electrical interference with like hair and things like that. I, I don't I, know. How I wonder happened. if it's some biofeedback device. I watched it. Like I'm gonna eventually interview on my on my stream or something like that because I mean I'm sure like I mean have you seen like uh, oh there it is it's right there. And, and, so, we're, and we're sure this is real. I mean like I'm as sure I, mean, I don't know maybe it's not but like because because people like think it. that other video game the really good graphics one is real. I don't think that's just real either. Oh I think it is. Really? Yeah absolutely. Have you seen that? Kinda. What? There's this new game where the graphics are like more real than real life. It's called Unrecord. Hmm. It's like a yeah. body cam FPS game. Yeah, but it, the f the in-game footage looks like it's real, like it looks filmed. Right. 
Interesting. It, yeah. It, for oh yeah, I've I've seen some like clips of that. It, yeah, it, it's not out long. yet, right? Oh no, mm-hmm. no. Okay. It looks like somebody recorded it and then edited it to look like it was a video game. Like I don't know. Like maybe maybe it's my tinfoil hat. I really don't think that shit is 100 percent authentic. I just it makes no sense. My brain, my yeah. brain can't my brain cannot process that that being graphics. That makes no sense. Oh, I, I absolutely think so. I mean, I, I was gonna I was gonna ask though, like so. You're talking about like obviously people feel like they perceive a bigger sense of accomplishment the harder something is. Well, then why the hell do people pay to win in games? Uh, I know that. Well, s- yeah, well, let's hear it because <laughs> it's fucking fun. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, so when we talk about pay to win, what kind of game are we talking about? We are talking about any game like let's say Honkai Star Rail just came out recently. The three of us have played it, mm-hmm. and uh, you spend money, and there's a chance for you to get something that will be more powerful than what yeah a, a better unit that free to play yeah. players can yeah get. so so i think i think it's because it's the same reason why people cheat to get into med school right because the, the reward that you get at the end when i beat something in a particular game or i down this boss if i could pay to win to uh-huh. beat millennia i still get to walk around and say hey i beat millennia yeah i've got the sword now right so now what started to happen is we place value on accomplishments within games uh-huh. and if you suck too much to do them you just pay to win Right. And then there's also like other things about pay to win, which is that I think they're just really good at the way that they design you wanting to purchase things. They sure are <laughs> like because, yeah. c- you know, like I remember when I was playing like Genshin Impact, like you've got some four star character and then there's like a five star character who's just objectively better. Yeah. For Genshin, yeah. that was a massive problem for Honkai Star Rail. It's actually that's actually not a problem, hmm. which is crazy to me. And you, you, I think you'll realize that because this, this, you have a Zila at E4. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of damage. <laughs> but there's a Don Hang who's completely free, and he only does like 10% less damage at E0. So I'm doing 10% more. That's true. Yeah. That's very true. Mm. But I, I, I have played my first Gaijin. This is my first Gaijin game ever where I'm completely free to play. Hopefully by the time of this is releasing, I'm still free to play. Uh, it makes the games, in my opinion, for this one specifically, it is so much more fun. I love it. I mean, so here's the other thing with free to play. Yeah. You still pay with time. Of course. Right? So there's also. It's free to play. I just have to play 12 hours a day to keep up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and so, like, I have a buddy who's like a radiologist who, you know, would spend, I don't know, like thousands of dollars on every Hearthstone expansion. Oh, my God. And, and he's just like, yeah, sure, I could grind, but, like, you know, it's Do just the math. easier. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is the other thing that I, I don't even think gamers, uh, game developers have really realized this yet, but. I don't think they really understand. They're they're still operating off of like an old anchor, right. which is that the price of a video game is based on what my parents are willing, what I have to convince my <laughs> yeah. parents. For, yeah. Right, and everyone's getting up in arms over seventy dollars. But I think at some point a game developer is going to realize like there are people out there who will pay a thousand dollars a month for a really high quality, or even five thousand dollars a month for a high quality gaming. I agree. Yeah, a lot of them play Genshin Impact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. You got the whales, right? Yeah, I spent. Uh, I think the most I spent. On one copy of a character, it was actually it was actually a weapon. It was called Staff of Homa. I think it was somewhere in the range of twelve thousand dollars for one copy of a weapon, and I had to do it five times. Wait, what character's what weapon was that? Times. I had to pull for a weapon called Staff of Homa. It's a really funny thing that they do in these games, where yeah. so usually in the games there's like two different things that have like a gambling system. There's the character, and there's an empowering device for the character. So the empowering device for the character, am I right about this? Yep, yep. Is, and all of them, like with the characters, the more duplicates of the characters you get, the, the more the base like power level of the character increases. And it's the same thing with the weapons too. So it's not enough for you to get the weapon once. There are other functionalities that you unlock by getting it multiple times. Yeah, this is like that constellations, right? Yep. yep. Yeah, I was there like, I was like, what is this? But yes, the, I have to pull it like six times to unlock this. That's stuff? right. But the big difference is with the character constellations in Genshin, um, the characters you pull for once. If you lose, you get it the next time. Okay. When Genshin first came out. That system didn't exist for the weapon banner. It's called a pity system. Yeah, they did not have a pity system. Yeah, so it's like if you miss it nine times, you'll at least get it the tenth time. Yeah, but this one didn't have so it. So people will just keep pulling. So I pulled for it, and I did this all on stream. Um, I lost the quote-unquote 50-50 22 times, which is astronomical. Quote-unquote yep. And I was, I was, <laughs> yeah. I was losing my, f- and this is all on video too, I was losing my fucking mind. And after the video, the video has over a million views now. Um, it was posted all over Billy Billy, which is a Chinese website as well, but it's like YouTube. And their video of it got like 10 million views. And the player base all saw this, got absolutely furious. 
like sort of like strangling, uh, which was what was the original name? Mihoyo, now Hoyoverse, for like, you need to change this. And two weeks after I pulled for Staff of Helmet, they changed the entire system, and now they have a pity on the weapon system as well. well. Let me give, so me you're responsible for the pity system? I, people say that, but I don't believe it. Yeah. It's, it's wow. a coincidence. Do you feel like the people that got the staff after you devalued your staff, though? Yes. <laughs> Oh. Yep. Yep. There yep. it is. Yours is special. Like, I, yeah. uh -huh. No, it's not. <laughs> it's special. Yeah. yeah he, he got it the hard way. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, they, these Yo. kids these days, they'll never understand what it was really like. <laughs> $12,000 in the hole. 22 missed chances. I mean, it's it's hard, but sometimes if your life isn't really going anywhere, the only place you can be elitist is in a yeah. video game. Well, do you think that's like oh a big reason God. why? Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, you think there's, <laughs> it's a big reason why a lot of people move over and they like, that's why these all of these video games now have like these achievement systems and like leaderboard systems and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I think so. This is what's happening is it's almost like Darwinian, where yeah. there's like a whole marketplace and developers are creating different features. Uh huh. And the ones who figure out how to exploit like some new circuit in the brain is the feature that catches on. Yeah. Right. So if you even if you think about like um, EverQuest, they were like, okay, let's make an RPG. And let's add community to it. Is so EverQuest the one where you could drop cows from the sky? I don't. Think or is that, is that? Do you know what I'm talking about? I, EverQuest is like the first MMO. I mean, there's a cow level in Diablo too. I no, there was know. some game where you get super jacked and then you could like drop cows from the sky. It was an old game back when I was a kid. Maybe? I have no idea. Man. Maybe. No, oh, okay. My bad. It sounds like some kind of bug. Oh, okay. My bad. My bad. My bad. Yeah, it's like a Game Shark cheat code. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, so I think people figure out, okay, like if we add like achievements and stuff, right. like we add completionist stuff. And then I think um, uh, I played that, what's that, Lost Ark, for example. Oh, God. And and they do a good job of like making the completionist stuff like kind of fun and not repetitive. I hate, the, you know the adventure guides and adventure yeah. journals on Lost Ark? Imagine if you open up your page and everyone's is 100%. Yeah, so so yes. they, they figure out, right? I enjoyed that because it was like the best thing about it. Here's one of the things that like sucks about WoW and like a lot of games now is that you never actually have anything that like lasts. Like I think that people like having something that they mm. know that they'll have for a long period of time. And like those Lost Ark Adventure Journals, that bullshit that I did last year still matters. Because it gives you like some flat bonus on something, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. flat bonus, exactly. And like you feel like you did something and it's done. Right. So, I mean, that that's like, that's a prime example. So, like, right. the, some developers sitting there and think, okay, okay, so, like, we're going to grind for, like, you know, tier one gear. Yeah. And that'll all become obsolete the second that tier two drops. That's exactly right. And so, what Lost Ark figured out is, like, hey, we're going to actually, like, the time that you put into this grind will never be taken away from you. Yeah. And so, for people who are, like, loss averse... Uh -huh. Or, you know, we're like stingy and we're like, we don't want something to be taken away from like us. They figured, out, yeah. they figured out how to take advantage of that. Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, all those hours that you spent grinding, not only do they work in Lost Ark, they give you flat bonuses in every game that you play after that. Yep, exactly. Like a every, every raid you do is going to give you those same bonuses. You need those stat point potions and you have to do this. And so yeah. after you do it, the work is done and you've like accomplished this thing. And, and you get, like, a stat point potions are worth, like, oh, yeah. five points, and you're, you have, like, 2,100 of a particular stat, oh, yeah. right? But, like, eventually yeah. you hit a break point, and then you have the extra point level where you can actually buy the new skill or something. And, like, I think that's a big thing, but you used an interesting word there, exploit. Um, what do you think the ethics is in a lot of this stuff? Ethics for what? Well, I, I mean, the big thing, right? I mean, is, is like, pay-to-win games, right? Is this gambling? Like, what do you think? Uh... Is this gambling? So I think that when things... Is it, is it harmful gambling? I think that's probably a better question. Do, do I think it takes advantage of the same circuits that gambling takes advantage of? Yes. Okay. So, but I don't know... If, so, like, let's... Uh, this is where... I mean, I'd love to hear what y'all think, too, but yeah. let, let's, like, take a step back for a second. Uh -huh. First of all, I think gambling was a lot more the case when things have real market value, right? So, like, for yeah. a while, like, if you look at CSGO and stuff, yeah. um, you know, I worked with someone who was very successful running one of these CSGO like gambling sites oh. and and in terms of trying to help them be a better human mm. being of course um, and 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 so but it, it's kind of interesting because I think that there's like an argument to be made that when things have real world value like it gets way closer to gambling oh it's mm. way worse mm. I think mm. but but I, I think that they absolutely take advantage of the same stuff that people who gamble take advantage of which is like right. random reinforcement schedules and not being able to stop and, and things like that yep. yeah skinner boxes mm -hmm. um so I, I think that's i mean i don't think there's any debate 
that those psychological mechanisms are at play. Yeah. Now, ethics is kind of tricky because we, you know, ethics is usually profession based. So it's right. not generally like good or bad. And I don't know what the ethical system of game developers is. I don't know if anyone's developed one. I don't know if anyone will. Uh huh. Um, but I mean, I think that's a huge problem. I don't think it's very profitable. So probably not. Probably not. Yeah, exactly. And now, a word from our sponsors. Well, if one episode isn't enough, we got even more now. We started the Steak and Eggs official Patreon. Patreon.com slash Steak and Eggs. We're going to have tons of stuff on there, as well as behind-the-scenes footage, bonus content, as well as questions that we are going to answer from you guys directly. So if you guys want to be a part of that and see what there is to offer, take a look at it at patreon.com slash steak and eggs. I mean, you don't really hear about people's lives being ruined by like rolling in, in Genshin or in Gacha games or those types of games that have gambling. I mean, you need to listen more. Yeah, no, it, it fucks Does it me happen? Up. Yeah, no, I, I like I went like zero dollars in my bank account because of a game called uh well I'm not gonna say because I was sponsored by it recently. Uh, I lost <laughs> a lot of money to gotcha games. It's bad. I have a I have a serious problem. That's why I'm trying to binge and cleanse myself right now. Binge, it's, it's binge bad. and cleanse. Like I'm binging the free to play experience to cleanse myself of being a whale. So I'm playing like 14 hours a day completely for free, rather than playing for three hours a day and spending ten thousand dollars every time I log on. So is it is it common for people to like spend all their money on? Because I, I haven't seen much of that compared to like people talking about like slots and like oh, traditional. Oh, I I have five to six friends even right now who have like really? spent everything they have on these. Games. I actually didn't know that because I haven't really seen that. Oh yeah, it's bad. Talked about it's it's for sure bad. That's why like it's very important like as a content creator, at least whenever I play God games, I tr I do treat Hunk I Star with the exact same as like slot machines every single time i play i'm like you should not spend like be careful with your money it is very it's a slippery slope like be careful with your money and i'm trying very hard to advocate for free to play even when i was a whale i said i'm doing this because i'm a content creator you should not do this this is bad you will lose do not get it twisted you will not win do, do you have a sense of what made it hard i mean ha what was going on in your head when you were spending bankrupting yourself playing gotcha games dead ass i was depressed and that was the only feeling of dopamine that I would get, is spending money to get cute anime girls that were cute. And I was like, oh my God, I have a Eula now. Now my life problems don't exist. And then I'd turn off the game. It was the same thing you were talking earlier, where like people grind for games because they don't have anything else going on in real life. I never grinded harder in a video game than when I was just like losing in real life. I was like, I was like, not challenger. I got diamond. <laughs> in, I got diamond in league, and I was like smoking like two packs a day, like slamming energy drinks. And when I would go from like silver two to silver one i was like oh fuck yeah dude i'm so sick i'm like i'm killing it in real life so that that hit me deep you feel like you're not wasting your time exactly like there is no better feeling than to play video games all day and to go to bed and know you did something yep like it, it is such a weird feeling and i felt that way a lot but the problem was for me is i turned like 27 and that sucked because I was like, man, I've been doing this for like 10 years nonstop and my friend just got married and my other friend has a job and I have uh, this. Well, I've got this new mount, you know, it's pretty cool. And so it was like kind of a reality check. But yeah, there's tons of people that like they'll spend all of their money. Like I'm talking like five figures whenever they don't even really have a job. You said a quote years ago that really fucked me up. <clears throat> where you were talking about like I, it, let me correct me like let me know if you know what yeah. I'm talking about you're you're on Facebook and you see all these middle-aged women yeah post about the minions movie taking their kids out to the movie theater and then you realize those middle-aged women were your classmates in high school bro it's a real reality check i had to lay yep. down after that one yep. yeah <laughs> that so was, that was bad <laughs> yeah and well I, I think that also like a lot of these games right i mean they do kind of like they're super cheerful, they're really happy. And so I think that they do have like a, a big appeal to people that are kind of like feeling empty or they don't really have something going for them in real life. And then so they, they play these games and it makes them feel better. Uh, I don't know if that's something that's scientific, but it's certainly a vibe. So, so there's all kinds of cool science. So uh, I saw an interesting study recently that there's people tested different cognitive domains uh -huh. and cognitive flexibility so it's not like attention or focus or memory. Cognitive flexibility is the only thing that correlates with rank in League of Legends. So mm. the more cognitively flexible you are, the the better you like. There's like they've they've done stuff. So like if you can think in different types of like paradigms. 
Yeah. So okay. if you kind of like, so just a simple example, right? So if you if y'all are not challenger tier, mm -mm. No. chances are it's because of your teammates, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. And, guys and, suck. Uh, right. That's what you were so, saying. So you, yeah, just, of you just get you just get stuck, right? So if like if if you're if I'm playing a game and I lose, it's because my you know noob jungler or whatever whatever the position is in league of legends yeah unlucky right so they, they didn't gank the lane and their their enemy jungler ganked me and my our jungler didn't do anything so in that moment you get locked into this particular idea right and like this is the real tragedy if you play games at least I, i'm like this now i didn't used to be yeah. i used to get better at games i don't anymore no Fuck. My, don't i just to. get just i just get money. worse right so yeah. like, oh. i'll play a game like i i've pe played like probably 1300 hours of dota Mm -hmm. and 1500 hours and like my rank just steadily goes down yep and most people like who play games like we just kind of suck and we're not going to get better and it's because we don't we're not cognitively flexible about why we win or we lose right we don't think about it critically what, when so we just queue up again do you think that there's any logic in the fact that kids that are 13 that are playing Fortnite don't have to think about a mortgage taxes health insurance <laughs> or anything else, and all they have to do is think about building that little house in Fortnite and shooting you, do you actually think that has any any validity? That like a more clear mind, because kids 100%. aren't- 100%. Okay, so it's not my fault then. Yeah, okay, exactly. Right. Yeah, I thought so. These fucking kids, I mean, so, 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 but video, yeah. that, that, That's the kind of thing where it's like, well, maybe you should be a little bit cognitively flexible there. Yeah, yeah you, a bit. You, you ask the question in a way that's going to evoke a particular response, right? Uh-huh. And, and so you're looking for someone to reinforce what you already Absolutely. believe. I'm happy to do that. 100%. That's <laughs> exactly what I'm looking for. And, and, yes. and the reason that you're losing to kids in Fortnite is because they don't have to play a mortgage. That's, that's right. That's what it comes down oh, to. Okay, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, I knew right. it wasn't my fault. Okay, great. <laughs> scientifically proven guys yeah so yeah i mean i i see a lot of the games and i i am the same way like i will play a game and i will crater on a boss and just dog shit the boss for like three or four hours wake up the next morning first pull it it's dead it's not even a problem no but so, so that's, a, that's a that's a process Isn't like, no, no like, that that's that's legit so like yeah. so for example um so like everything that we know about how to study efficiently also uh -huh. works for playing games so i'll ask okay. you all a couple questions do you do better the first time you fight a boss compared to the second th through fifth time? The first time, every single time. Yeah. Every single yeah. time, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So this is like a, this is like a common pattern. So this means that there's something like if like everyone is saying yes, like we do really well. If you get the boss down like, eight, like down to twenty percent health and then you wipe, mm. and the second time you go in, you get like two shotted, right? Yeah. That's yeah. what happens. <laughs> So, so this is like the science of performance and all the stuff around learning. So if you, I, I did this with Elden Ring. I actually like yeah. applied this because I didn't have four hours to grind. Right. So what I would do is I'd play a boss for like maybe like 20 to 40 minutes and then I'd take a break. And then what happens, especially when you sleep, is all of your learning that happens in, in short-term memory actually yeah. consolidates into long-term memory. And so even when I was beat, like uh, playing Radon and stuff, I would, uh, not Radon, um, uh, the Radagon. Oh, yeah. Right. So what I would do is like I'd play for like half an hour every morning mm -hmm. and then like in four or five days I beat it. It was easy. So but if, like if you, you play for five hours at a stretch, you're going to lose. OK. All right. So that's like an actual good way of handling it. All right. That is amazing. I well, the I, problem is that people will say that you rage quit if you do that. Well, that's the thing is like okay. on stream because that I do. that's that's my, that's <laughs> my coping mechanism is like I have to take a break like the way that I do it. I've told Emmy about this. This is a story I've told before is that I will go and I get mad and I will put like 10 blankets on myself and I will make like a little nest of uh, yeah, a nest of blankets and I will lay in the dark and I will calm down and then I can get back up and play the game. Now, does that work very well with streaming? No, it does not. Yeah, I think streaming is a whole different ball game. It is. You oh, can't, yeah. You can't ever take a break. Exactly. I genuinely feel that in three to four years, maybe even shorter, there is going to be a copious list of all the mental illnesses caused by streaming. I genuinely feel that because, like, for me, like, when I go live and I can talk to thousands of people at the same time, you know, I can get that dopamine. I'm like, chat type one. <laughs> like, screams down the chat arena. Like, now when I talk to normal people one-on-one, -on -one, I don't get the same hit. And I'm just like, I... I find talking to real people, uh, for, for the majority of people, not, not streamers, talking to other streamers is fine, but talking to real people is so fucking boring for me. What are they, NPCs? Exactly. Oh my God. It's bad, bro. I don't know if that's uh -huh. a streaming problem. I yeah. don't think that existed it, it, before. No, it, it wasn't like that before. It was not like that. When I started streaming, like, I just, there was so much dopamine in talking to my chat. Like, sometimes talking to my chat is my favorite person to talk to. I see them as an entity.
Oh my God, Techcon. It's bad. Well, it is, it's it is, bad. I mean, chat is an amalgamation of like 10,000 people and you get to see the funniest things, right? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. So how can, how can one normal person compete against the hive mind that is chat? They can't. Well, it's it's the 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 other side of that though is like sometimes you, you, there's ten thousand people and it's like that one dude that says like you know what man I think you kind of fell off and it's like that's the one that people focus on and it's like I can always tell whenever somebody's in a bad spot if they're sitting there talking about it you know it's bad yeah I mean so that also like our brain filters out so it's kind of interesting because if you talk to streamers I don't know if you guys y'all have seen this but this is basically what uh, Asmund just said. You know, you, chat is scrolling past faster than you can read it. Yeah. But if someone says something negative about you, your brain literally like floats that to the surface Son of, of your consciousness. Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's really interesting, and I think this is why streamers like it, it's a very um, burnout is super high because you can get like 99 people who like what you do, but all it takes is one vocal person to really like wear on you. Right. And human beings were not designed for that, right? We've like evolved in like these tribal societies of like 300 people where you can't, I mean, uh, people like y'all, I mean, y'all can be hated on by 0.01% and that's still like 10,000 people, yeah. yeah. right? And we're just not designed for the hatred of like 10,000 people to be in our brain. What do you think the long-term effect is that, uh, of that's gonna be? I mean, do we know? Uh, I mean, what is y'all's life like? At this point, it's I think y'all enter the long term. Oh man! So I used to be so stressed out all of the time, and it's like if somebody toasts some shit to me, it will still annoy me, right? It's not like I'm not like oh I'm above this, right? It will still piss me off. But now I just I read it. I think that the the way that the benchmark that I always used was that do I think about this comment or this statement after I get done reading it? You know, like, do I think about it after the stream or whatever? And for a long time, the answer to that was yes. Probably in the last, like, year or so, probably no. But it took a long time for me to get there, and I would not even say I'm close to the destination. You know, it's just a little bit better. What about y'all? Okay. Mm, I've gotten pretty good at, like, I'll see a comment and be like, that's just one guy who doesn't like me, mm. and then I won't think about it. But I've also, well, how long have you been streaming? since 2016. I've been streaming since about the same time, 2015, 2016, but I also had a like longer period of like chilling. Chilling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I blew up fast, but you like have been like this for a long time, right? So I think for me like being at the lower range for a long time helped me like prepare for like when it was bigger because I had like seen hate comments and stuff, but it was at a much smaller scale. I'd already accepted like that's just how it is. So then now when it's on a larger scale, I'm already used to like thinking in that way. So I think maybe for me, that's why. Like there are times where it bothers me. I'm not like invincible, but I would say most of the time, like stuff like that's just kind of like whatever. Yeah, for me, for me like whenever, like it, it kind of was like that, it went up and then like I went from getting like 8K viewers to getting like 30K and I would sometimes like peak at like 40K viewers, like within like a month or two, yeah, right? Like it was month, that big of yeah. a change. And I was like, bro, like, because easy come, easy go, right? And I think that's what a lot of streamers and people worry about is like, you know, how long is it going to last? Like, it's like this now, but what if it's not like this tomorrow? You know, there's just so much yeah, uncertainty. I think every streamer is like that. Oh, yeah. yeah, for me, yeah. I was a 1 to 2K streamer for six or seven years. Then went from, yeah, <laughs> then went from like 2K like to 10 to 20. And that, that was a lot, but what stressed me out more wasn't, like, the comments. It was, like, always, like, worrying that I was, like, going to let people down. Because, like, people were like, oh, I see so much potential for her. And that was what stressed me out the most, not, like, the hate comments. Yeah. But I, I know, like, you, with, like, what really bothers you is when people say things about you that just straight up aren't true. Oh. But I, th I think that's true for everybody. Yeah, like, being called, like, cringe and annoying, I'm like, okay, lol. <laughs> okay, yeah. people says... Yeah, Tectum blew up my house. That's why I'll never watch his channel. But, like, obviously, should not like that, but sim similar to it. Just People will post, I'm not even kidding you. Like, Tectum and I are a lot the same, where we're loud, obnoxious assholes. And because yeah. of that, we rub a lot of people the wrong way. That's just what happens. Sometimes, at least, right? And at least, like, it, it's the way that you communicate, right? And, uh, in doing that, I uh, you get a lot of people that will just like really viscerally dislike you. Mm. And I have had people writing paragraph after paragraph of why he is the worst person in the world. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, so I mean, the long-term effects, honestly, dude, like yeah. we have no idea, right? Cause yeah. like, this is a new thing. We don't know what this is gonna do. This is like someone has just invented the cigarette. We have no idea what, 
I mean, like, like you. Well, hopefully, it's not like that. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully not. Yeah. I, I mean, but I, I think we're starting to see all kinds of problems. So, like uh-huh. at this point, we've worked with probably 400 content creators wow. across different platforms, and we definitely see everything that y'all are describing. Mm-hmm. So, what we discover is that content creators who survive are the ones who develop some of these interesting principles. So it's it, interesting to listen to Emmy. She's like developed this idea of like acceptance, right? So you've accepted that this is the way that it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Zach, you actually set some limits around different things. So you're like, okay, you have, you have awareness of, okay, how do I let this comment bother me? Uh, if this comment bothers me after I read it, then I, I awa- I'm aware that this is like some kind of toxicity. Yeah. So that level of awareness will help you like protect against it. Yeah, thinking and, about thinking. And then the other thing that we see a lot with content creators that's really, really dangerous is like this idea that the sand in the hourglass is running out. Oh, yeah. So you blow up, right? And like it's easy come, easy go. The there gravy go. train's not going to be here forever. So I have to take advantage of it. I have to grind. When I've got 10K concurrence, I have to grind for 14 hours a day. Yeah, hey, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally right? what I'm doing right, right? now. And, and so what happens is like y'all pay the price. I mean, I say y'all because I, I, I mean, I'm sort of a content creator, but... Uh, you know, the, y'all pay the price in every other dimension of your life. Sure do. Yep. I've, yep. I've been grinding. I did um, five 12-hour streams into a 15-hour stream yesterday. And the moment I've, 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 la- I've, I've cut off like an hour and a half to two hours of sleep, and the moment I get offline, I'm like, okay, friends, talk to all of them. Family, talk to all Daily of them. Quests. Like, That's immediately. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm just like, I cannot get absorbed into this, but I also have to fucking grind. And then I'm like, cats, play with them. Food, eat it. And Wake Wilder, shout outs to him. He got me on a new diet plan, which has made me feel way better because I used to order all my food, but now I'm getting like pre-packaged meals and I've lost six pounds uh, in a week, which is a lot, but I'm dieting yeah. very heavily. Uh, but I feel good and I'm trying not to let it over- overwhelm me because my trick to dealing with like the copious amounts of stress and hate comments is just, just play with my cats. That's it. I have this little guy called Eggy. He's my best friend. He's the coolest. It's great. I've always, uh, I, I think that either I completely agree with them. They're like, this guy is the worst guy ever. I'm like, you're totally right. <laughs> you know, that's it. Yep. <laughs> Everything bad you think about me is totally true. And that's all there is to it. And it's also like, for me, I always look at it as like, I control my space and like how people talk to me. But people are going to talk about you no matter what. And it's like, it sucks to see people that say stuff that are ba- that's bad about you. But at a certain point, you can't control what other people do. You, you, can't, you can't stop them from thinking something stupid. And like the worst part about it is if you prove somebody wrong on the internet, they are n- under no obligation to acknowledge that. <laughs> yeah. like, and, and, and so if you're trying to prove to them that like, oh, I'm right or you're wrong, what you're doing is you're giving them the power to tell you that you win, right? Because at that point, you they have to say, you win, I have been convinced. But why would somebody have to do that? They have nothing to lose. So I've learned that it just doesn't matter. You're never gonna convince people. Do what you wanna do, be your own North Star, because nobody else is going to lead you. That's what I think. That's smart. I like that. I also think it's a little bit sad. Like, Oh, yeah, it sucks. You know, because like I, I, I think that it's unfortunate. So I think when you're talking about the long-term effects. Yeah. So what, I, what I'm hearing is the flip side is it's survival. Absolutely. Yeah. North Star sounds beautiful. <laughs> but it also sounds incredibly isolating, right? Because you can't mm-hmm. in, engage. And that's why I think this podcast is great. Because you all seem like regular humans, actually, like as we, as we discovered. I'll surprise you. <laughs> 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 but I, I mean, I, I think the other thing, just if you think about, you know, people who get really angry at random people on the Internet, I, I oftentimes find, because we also work with a lot of those people, too, that, you know, when someone just makes up a lot of crap about you, that's super, super toxic. Yeah. Where did they learn to do that? There's a decent chance that they were demonized in the household that they grew up in. Right. That's true. There's like something. Where, where do you yeah. learn how to do that? Just randomly make up crap and blame someone for all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. And and going back to, you know, is, is video game, are they the, a symptom of the problem? Are they? And I think it's kind of like that's what we see is that there are people out there who are vulnerable. Right. Who weren't taught how to succeed in the re, like the regular world. Right. Yeah. They can't, they can't hold a job. And it's not like there's anything. You know, they're not like busted or anything. It's just I think we oftentimes take for granted how much kids are given. Like why yeah. do, you know, high socioeconomic status parents lead to successful children i I think i'm so lucky right and it's like you know both of my parents were like college graduates 
like that's a massive like people say you got lucky it's like yeah my stream and everything like that but there's like some core things like that that are just so tremendous that like yeah people don't even see them it's like air I remember when I was working, this was back in the days when I worked in an emergency room, but there was a, a brilliant nurse who I'd sometimes I'd, you know, they'd give me the chart, right? So there's like yeah. a, a patient who comes in some like 22 year old kid or whatever. Mm -hmm. who's got like these 16 diagnoses, like wow. antisocial personality disorder, drug, poly substance use, bipolar disorder, major depression. You can't have both of those. Yeah. And I'd be like, you know, what's wrong with this person? This person just has this laundry list of diagnoses, ADHD too. And she said something. Can I use profanity here? Absolutely. Yep. So she said, you know, there's a kid with shit life syndrome. Uh -huh. And I thought it was one of the most eye opening yeah. diagnoses because you can la slap all these labels. But, you know, this is a kid who I remember one kid was defecating in places that they weren't supposed to in the school. Uh -huh. And like kids don't normally do that. Right. Like they, they don't just take a dump where they're not like there's something really going on where this kid was not socialized properly. Like they don't know how to plan for the future they don't even think about the future and speaking of why do people gamble so much it's because money is something that's in a bank account it's just some number somewhere yeah right? it's theoretical yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of times especially if you've got adhd like people with adhd have temporal myopia which means that they have difficulty like looking into the future so they just think in the now they can't like calculate actions in the future yeah so they'll, they'll take the immediate gratification over the delayed gratification every day of the week, and that's because their brain literally cannot calculate the benefit of waiting. I, I think that's probably right. I mean, I think that there's also, like, I, I think everybody does that sometimes, but it's, like, a difference between, like, doing it sometimes and making it a pattern of behavior that is just, like, uh, corrosive to your life. And, and I think that does happen probably with a lot of people, but you're – you're totally right that a lot of the people that are like super hostile about things o online, if you look into like where are they coming from, like I'll have this happen. I'm sure you guys have had it happen too, where like somebody will make a mean comment or like they'll say something totally crazy and then they'll reply back, you know, two days later, I'm like, sorry, man, you know, like yeah. I had some <laughs> issue happen, yeah. Yeah. like or whatever. Yeah, it happens all the time. And it's like, it, it's hard to know like what to do with that because like as a content creator, it's like, is it okay to treat somebody like a punching bag? No, but this is a situation you're in as well. Yeah. I have a, a couple of buddies where like they're, they're super kind, like happy people the, the majority of the time. And then randomly like this real ugly side will like come out. But it seems like so foreign to who they are. And I was talking to a couple of them and the both of them had like family issues. So then I was like exploring that and then eventually I met their family and the, the real like ugly side that comes out of them was like the direct behavior of the way that their parents treated them, which was insane because I was like, oh my God, I get why this happens now. Uh, is, is that like a common thing where like you pick up a lot of negative traits from like your family or is that oh, like that? 100%, like 110%. Yeah. Like I have, uh, you know, so my, my I, I have kids. And so one of the funniest things is like when, I, when my daughter was two, my older daughter, my grandmother, like, I don't know if y'all have seen like old people like get up and sit down. You know how they make noises when they get mm -hmm. up and sit down? Yep. Sure like, do. like, <laughs> like, ah, like, you, you, yeah. you know, like, and, and so like my two year old started making these noises. Like, oh like every time she would God. sit up and she'd yeah. like grunt and I was like, what is going on? <laughs> and then I realized, oh, she's like doing what her, her yeah. great grandmother does. Mm. Which right. is, you, and so we, we learned this. What's really terrifying is when I see this, I don't know if y'all have seen like raised by narcissists or raised by borderlines. I've seen it. No, I haven't. I've, I've it sounds it. awesome. I've seen, I've yeah, like subreddits, communities, like the yeah. community, like support communities of people who have like narcissistic or borderline parents. And if yeah. you look at those posts, they're very narcissistic. Really? Right, they're they're like, oh my god! Like, what they'll do is they'll post about how yeah. like like their parent is such an awful person. They did this, 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 and there's no other side of the story. Right, it's all like this person has victimized me, and then of course it's a support community, so everyone's like, yeah, screw them, right? Yeah, how could they do that to you? Right, exactly. and but but it's it's really scary because like what's if you get raised by narcissistic parents, you are gonna think the same way. Yeah, right. And, and so it, it's really scary, but yeah, I mean, we inherit so much from our parents. Mm. What do you think about like, obviously, um, you know, like younger people getting on the internet, especially like kids and like social media, overall positive or overall negative? You know, people under 18, let's say, what do you think? Um, so let me ask you a question in return. Okay. Uh, is 
harnessing nuclear energy overall positive or overall negative? Depends on if the reactor blows up. <laughs> what do you all think? I would say negative. Emmy? I would say it can be used positively, but there will be negative effects. So I, I think that's where we are with technology. Mm -hmm. So right now what's happened is that technology has expanded without any sort of checks or balances. And we're seeing this a lot with like OpenAI and ChatGPT, where OpenAI shows up and they actually have a lot of good ethical safeguards yeah. with ChatGPT. Yeah, they do. Now the problem is that all of the big dogs that are competing with them are like, oh crap, we're behind. And they're actually firing their ethics oh, Let's staff. get rid of those safeguards and <laughs> pulling us back, yeah. So, so we kind of see this in the platform wars where like now, oh. like let's say YouTube is competing with Twitch, Google is competing with Amazon, Yeah. right? Is competing with like Apple, is competing with, mm -hmm. with Tencent, TikTok, whatever. Oh yeah. yeah. And the thing is like they're fighting for your attention. And no matter who wins out of them, there's definitely one loser. <laughs> Yeah. Right, so whether I spend whether YouTube shorts pulls me away from TikToks, I'm still not getting my homework done. Uh huh. And so I think what we're seeing is that technology has advanced so rapidly that we don't have the right safeguards, and so we're starting to see a lot of negatives. But I, I'm I'm one that's sort of kind of thinking like we have to kind of move forward. I don't think like I mm -hmm. think that we should overhaul our education system mm -hmm. in the same way that like you know we don't need to memorize a bunch of stuff because we have information at our fingertips. Yep. Yep. And won't so have a calculator in your pocket. For, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. We, dude, right? I've talked about this so much. I 100% agree. So, so I mean, I think it's kind of like weird, but I think that we should really start to rethink education with like, okay, what if you have AI tools instead of banning AI? Right. It's like, let's change a little bit. If we have AI as the human race, like what can we do with that? Like everyone's worried about it replacing particular jobs. Yeah. But my thought is like, you know, how can we run with it? Because I think we're going to have to. And the more that we learn to like adapt to it, I think is really what we need. I completely agree with you because the truth is that it's like what you're saying with the platform rules and like the other AIs is that like, for example, we might have ethical standards, but the people that don't, uh, there's a reason why like they're going to outperform, right? It's the same with like AI art. It's like you can say, oh, well, we're not going to use this. Well, whenever other people use it and they outperform you and then there's a free market and then people choose the better alternative because of something that you could say is unethical, does it really matter? Well, I don't know. Are people still buying Nike shoes? Looks like people don't give a shit. So that's what I think is that uh, you, you have to adapt. You can't just like try to hide something in the dark and pretend like it's not real. I think that's what's happening with a lot of AI stuff. But I think you're also totally right that it's, it's, it's advancing so fast. And like, did you see the TikTok hearing, the, the congressional TikTok hearing? Yeah. But does TikTok access the, the Wi-Fi? Like, what? You know, yes, yes. <laughs> So it, it's like, I, I feel like the governmental- <laughs> Oh my uh, God. Yeah, you guys just seen that. Uh, the, the governmental apparatus is like, it's just so far behind from like uh, technology. It, it's, it's awful. And especially whenever you see, I, I'm sure you've looked into this too, is like these AI tools that they have for mental health. That's crazy. Yeah, so I think there's, there's, there's a lot of hype around AI. Okay. And, and I think that there are AI tools for mental health. I saw someone recently was like, you know, filed a lawsuit because an AI did not treat someone who was suicidal appropriately or something the like global, that. The global warming thing? N no, no, some, someone, oh, I guess one? someone was like okay. talking to some kind of AI chat, like support chat bot, yeah. and they ended up committing suicide. And, oh my God. And, and so, you know, someone's like- Oh, I, I had heard about, I don't know if this was the same case, but apparently like an AI, like there was a person talking to it and saying like, oh, well, you know, I feel really bad. And they were talking about like the environment and they asked the AI, you know, if I killed myself, would it be better for the environment? The AI said yes. Oh, yeah, maybe that one. Yeah, 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 that could have been the same one or it could have been another one. Yeah. Bro, what? Yeah, so I yep. mean, I, I think it's it's like where uh, there are a lot of people who think that AI can substitute for a lot of things, mm -hmm. but I think AI is just the next version of a calculator. Right. Right, so it can be used to extend what human beings are capable of. It's a, it's a tool rather than a replacement. The other thing that I'm starting to wonder is, y you know, I'm kind of curious what y'all think. Yeah. I'm not so sure that human beings, like, need to work anymore. I totally yep. agree. In, in what I, context? It, it, like it's like in 30 years, there is no way that it will still be a social expectation to have a job. There's no way. Unless so, you have like neo-feudalism or something like that. Well, because like this is what I was kind of wondering, right? With like hydroponic farming and like AI-based yeah. stuff. And, and, and even I think so if you look at like content creators, I think part of the reason that content creators have become a thing is because 
I'm starting to think when, you know, that entertainment is actually the most important thing that human beings can do. The problem is, I th I think I agree to that because I'm a content creator. I don't think I would agree with that if I wasn't. That's my problem right now because I've I've thought the same thing because all of my friends I've like convinced them to do entertainment shit instead and they're doing great. But I just I'm not sure that's just because that's all I know. That's that's my problem. Well, I mean, what I'm wondering is like, do do we need? Because uh, before, why did you need a job? Because the human race required yeah. that the majority of humans like contribute meaningfully to society, mm. right? But now, like, I'm just starting to wonder: Do we need the majority of human beings to contribute meaningfully to society? Or Absolutely not. I really don't think so. Have you seen the uh, that automated McDonald's? It's in like Fort Worth. <laughs> I knew you're gonna talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there's like a completely fully automated McDonald's. And I think there's like one person there that like maintains it. So it's like what happens, remember that happens to every McDonald's and every Taco Bell and every Wendy's and every- KFC. They do it at Chipotle, they right. won't fuck up your order. Yeah, true. And so- They it, may it, still run out of steak though. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> he knows. Yeah, he does. Well, they ran out of cheese the other day. Mm. You can believe that. It's Holy nuts. Shit. Yeah, it made me so mad. But uh, yeah, no, I, I totally owe in brown rice too, same time. They ran out of cheese at Chipotle? That's crazy. These guys, man, they are just chilling. Are you so? Are you sure someone isn't screwed with you, man? I, I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, 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 they in a Mexican they, fast food place. Yep, they sure are. They had queso, so I was able to kind of make it work, but mm. it was a bit weird. Don't they just have sacks of stuff in the fridge? Yeah, yeah but then they, they got to get it out of the fridge, yeah. and then they got to get it out of there. And then there's a bunch of other stuff, and it's like they could just sit there on their phone, and so you know, there's no cheese. And now. A word from our sponsors. Do you have any idea how many subscriptions you're paying for? I didn't. Well, today's sponsor, Rocket Money, is here to help. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. This personal finance app allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, build a custom budget, and grow your savings all in one place. I'm using Rocket Money to cancel all of my unwanted subscriptions with just a tap. Rocket Money also alerts me of important changes that impact my credit score and offers insights on ways to improve it. It helps me set budgets by monitoring spending by category and sends me notifications when I've exceeded them. To save more and spend less, join the 3.4 million members using Rocket Money. And I've got the hookup. Go to rocketmoney.com slash stake or click the link in the description to get started for free or unlock even more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash stake to get started for free. Get your money right. I've been sitting here thinking in my brain, what job would possibly need a human? Or at least uh, the amount of humans that we currently well, have. Well, like, so entertainment, this is like the really interesting thing. Because I'm sure you've seen like the phenomenon with like Nor Nurasama, with like the AI uh, VTuber. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Oh man. She's so funny. So, so there is an AI VTuber. It was programmed by a person named Vidal. And she's like, you know, of course, you're, you know, traditional anime girl. And she is completely AI driven. And she has an audience of thousands of people that watch her every single day. Average around four to five K. Yeah. So I wonder like how many people are actually going to like, you know, you have like handmade crafts and things like that that have like their own intrinsic value. And I'm wondering if like content creators will go down the same route of having to use intrinsic value of them being not an AI soon. Yeah, I, I wonder. I mean, I, so I think one of the things that I am noticing, though, I, I don't know if you guys have like watched a lot of these like cookie cutter shows. I don't know what else to call them. But like I feel like a lot of shows that get produced are sort of like super formulaic now. Like and what life? Like uh, reality, reality type of like I, I No, like I watched like The Diplomat on Netflix. Diplomat. I don't know if you guys have seen that. But mm -hmm. it's kind of like a sprinkling of like different shows like put together. It's like we're going to take a piece okay. of this. We're going to take a piece of this. We're going to mm -hmm. take a piece of this. And, and then kind of going back to this idea of like the yeah. Dark Souls storytelling, I think that the more formulaic we're getting, I don't, I think people are still missing something. Right. You can stimulate like dopaminergic circuits and you can have fun, but you don't end up with like a meaningful life, which Empty human calories. beings, huh? Empty calories. Empty calories. Yeah. What a great way to put it. So I think societally, like we're just eating a lot of like empty calories right now mm -hmm. as we, as we start to replace like enjoyment we're replacing meaning with enjoyment right and the more that we start to do that the more we're like filling up on these like spiritually empty calories do you think the when ai will get good enough to have it be spiritual too probably oh boy. but but i i think that the problem is that the ai the 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 sensory inputs that the ai can use won't be sufficient for human beings Really? Okay. So like we still need like oxytocin, like we hugged, right? Like that yeah. was meaningful. Like I liked hugging y'all. Oh. That was cool. It's good. 
and and I I think that this is I, I you know AI can do a lot of stuff, but I I don't know that it can deal with the physiology quite yet. I mean, maybe mm -hmm. one day. Yeah, that's one thing that I always wonder about, right? Because like you'll watch shows like Sword Art Online or Overlord, where it's like you're in this fantasy, completely different world, and it's like a complete neural deep dive. You're in a totally different world. And like you're not moving your arms around like it's a Wii or something like that. You're just in that world. And like how far away is that? It's like, is that ever going to happen? Because like at that point, I think like all bets are off because I don't know how people are even going to respond. It's it's so hard to even know. I think we're seeing the effects of it now. I Really? Know, like with, there's like a dating crisis going on. Is that is it real? Oh, yeah. Oh, people are dating like there is this one AI. It was called Replica. And people were dating their AIs, and the AI was even being marketed as a dating app. And people were making like posts about how they were in love with their AI and all kinds of stuff like that. It's like really getting nuts. Is that the app also where they ended up like cutting that off? And yep, so they it's had like to completely cut it off. They had these AI characters that they fell in love with, and then the app was like, "We're not doing that anymore." So it's like the person that they, the person just like died, basically. Yeah. They just like took it away. Yeah, so I imagine the grief that the human being who uses the app feels is probably real. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. that's actually freaky. Yeah, I mean, like it, it's it's weird because I do think that there is a dating crisis with that kind of stuff too. Because like also people have like a completely different like viewpoint. It's like if a girl goes on stream without makeup, people lose their minds. Oh they? my god, <laughs> it's nuts. And it's like they they don't know this. Oh, this was oh my god. So I'm going to use the same example. You're not going to like this, but we're going to use the AI cosplayer. And oh, it's somebody just funny. <laughs> you just brings so, up all so somebody <laughs> went and said that there was this AI cosplayer girl, and they said that it was unrealistic because her boobs were two different sizes. <laughs> Can you believe it? What that? do you mean an AI cosplayer girl? What I'm I mean... Have you not seen, like, AI-generated pictures? Yeah. So it's like a AI-generated character that looks kind of like a human i'm so, but is it supposed to is it an ai generated picture of what's supposed to be a, a human or is like it? that yeah that, that's okay yeah. yeah and they're just a bit better than that a little bit more realistic so like you know touched yeah, up that a bit it's not super realistic. so and you'll have people in the comments of these uh the, these types of posts being like wow you're so beautiful please message me and they don't even know that it's ai so it's like you have a point now where the like actual like human uh, like uh, asymmetries, right? Of like having different sized boobs or something like that. People are so conditioned to like anime and like AI and like all these like fake things that if they see something real, they think that it's fake. I, th yeah. I thought every girl's boobs were different size. I would say, I, I mean, I think there's probably a spectrum, but yeah, that's what, well, I'm, what I'm saying G is like, oh, okay. normal. Like yeah. Most human beings, like even if you look at your right hand and your left yeah. hand. Chances are yeah. they'll be asymmetric. Everyone's asymmetric. Oh my God, this one's the wrong way. <laughs> I'm just uh, like, right. <laughs> so like even yeah. if you hold your hands out in front of you, one of your yeah. arms will be longer than the other. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, so asymmetry is like pretty normal. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's I, just a lot of stuff that people don't. So, so do you about. think that's what? Do you think that's gonna have like a bigger impact than people realize? Like with the like the AI and the dating apps and like people getting so attached well, to that kind of stuff. Well, I, I'm so I mean, really I, curious what you think I, I think I think the AI dating stuff is probably a consequence of a larger problem. Okay. Right. So like, there's a dating crisis. I'm not just talking about AI. It's a symptom, not the disease. It is a symptom that will probably turn into a disease. Oh, good. Is what I would say. So, okay. so this is what we kind of know about coping mechanisms. So, yeah. like, let's say, okay, so let's say I'm depressed and I start playing video games. Uh huh. And so at that point, it's a symptom. Right. Right. It's like I'm using this as an escape from my life. But if I play enough video games, that my depression, if there's an organic depression that's underneath, that may have gone away. But the the video games will continue the cycle. So yeah. then it can sort of get a life of its own. Right. Which is sort of what we see. But I, what I'm talking about is like, so you just talk to like people, like it's hard, uh, like so t apparently Tinder's a mess. Um, you know, like people, the number of people who are single is going up. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think people meme about incels and stuff, but I think that, that like that number is rising. I've seen the graphs. Um, I think like 50% of people between the ages of 18 and 30, I think are single which I think is an all-time high. I don't remember the exact statistic. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, you know, people are, uh, some of the stuff, stats have to do with, like, sexual relations and things like that, where, like, there are more virgins who are older. 
Yeah. But I, I think something about the way that we interact with each other online is making it like hard to meet in person and sustain mm -hmm. relationships. It's like cannibalized real life. Yeah. What, what do you think the, uh, the, the resolution to that is? I mean, y'all tell me. Like, what's, what's y'all's dating <laughs> life like? Uh, for me, I'm single, and to be honest, my problem is I always thought that like life was better if you were in a relationship, but it's actually really fun to just not not have a person. It's weird to say it like that. It sounds really cope. But, like, it just I can just do whatever yeah. all the time. Yeah. I, I think it depends, right? There are times where you wish you were in a relationship, times where you're glad you're not, right? I think it's the same with almost anything. Uh, but, you know, it, it's like in general, like, I've always said uh, no mere mortal can live with Asmongold, and I think that's pretty much fucking true. Oh, but fuck, bro. What? That's fucked, but damn. Damn. But, but, I mean, you've never been to my house, though. <laughs> and so, <laughs> I yeah, I mean, I, I live like kind of a degenerate, but o overall, I mean, most people are pretty much not that way. But, you know, I, I think it's a, it's a matter of if I wanted to improve that, I could improve that. I, I could work harder to do that. And I think what the problem is with a lot of people is that they feel like they can't improve it. They're like stuck in a position where, you know, they didn't, they weren't popular in high school. They didn't go to a good college. They don't have a good job. They're not successful. And so you're in like this perpetual cycle of being lesser or being not as, as valid as you want to be. And I think that's what happens with a lot of people. That's why you see so many incels and people that just completely check out of society. Mm. What do you think of me? I think also with being online, you're presented with so many more like options and like you see so many different things. Like I know this is like an issue people have talked about, like with people that watch porn in relationships, like where they like won't want to be with their partner as much because they'll like see so much and then they'll like lose attraction to their partner. I think that's the thing. It, like, one million percent. Is. Yeah. So like, I feel like when you're someone who's online and you're like seeing all these people every day, like attractive people or like seeing all these different things about relationships, it makes you maybe less likely to like pick one person and invest in it. Maybe. The, I don't know. I mean, I, I think I s we see a lot of that. So there's all kinds of weird stuff going on. So with all these like Instagram filters and stuff, mm -hmm. I think body dysmorphia is on the rise on an astronomical level. I think my, I suspect that men have so traditionally women have had more body dysmorphia than men have. Yeah. But I think that that's actually like dudes are catching up. Oh, absolutely. So I, I think. Wait, what do you what do you mean? Like guys feeling like they're not like bro. If you don't have a six pack, if you're not ripped, you know, if you don't have a good hairline, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. You don't have a good jawline. Like I see these videos about like oh like how to fix your jawline, and it has like. Seven million views, something Jesus. like that. It's massively popular. So, so I, I even suspect that a fair amount of incels. So, incels are eight times as li uh, eight times more likely to be on the autism spectrum than than the regular population. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I suspect that a lot of male body dysmorphia is actually at the root of like being incels. But I, I think that in terms of dating and stuff, I, I think it's just hard because. Like Emmy's kind of saying, you know, there's just so much stuff out there and, and people are not willing to, like back in my day, like yeah. you kind of like rolled the dice. Like you didn't get a bunch of chances. So you yeah. kind of throw in with someone and then, yeah, you know, the, the whole, I mean, I'm sure divorce was is high amongst my, my like people my age mm -hmm. as well. But it was sort of like a, you don't really know what you're getting. And then there's this idea right now where I think a lot of people are looking for the right thing. Yeah. yeah, they're what? trying to, like, find the perfect thing. And right. I mean, when you're on Twitter, you scroll past, like, five yeah. women that are, like, 10 out of 10s, and you're just like, well, shit. Like, yeah. I'm just waiting for that. Yeah. And, and the dating apps, this is the big, like, irony of dating apps, right? So what the dating app said is that, hey, it's so hard to find the right person in the in the real world. We can do a bunch of stuff for you and find the right person, exactly what you're looking for. Because before, mm -hmm. you had to settle for one out of 300 people. Yeah. But now that there are three 30,000, 300,000 people, you can find the perfect person for you. And kind of what, what I think people are missing out on is that like success in a relationship isn't about finding the right partner. It's about like two people becoming the right partners. Yeah. Yeah. Like no, like no one will be like exactly perfect. It, and you won't be exactly perfect. For yeah. Anyone. yeah. It is so hard because uh, for me, uh, my father was divorced like seven, eight times. So oh I God. never, yeah, I never knew what a good relationship looked like. Right, and I was in a relationship for 10 years, and for seven years, we were both like normal people. We just like did our thing, we grinded, we were good. And then all of a sudden, I blow up out of nowhere on the internet, and then 
my life completely changes, mm. whereas my wife's life was like the same. And it was so hard to like connect those because it kind of is like when you get into a relationship, things work out when you're both headed down the same path. But the moment there's like curves on one, if like you can't adapt to the yeah. other person, oh my God, it was like the hardest thing I've ever done in my whole life. It was so hard. So like I, I realized that like relationships and even friendships are all about like compromising. It's kind of like the same thing that I learned from like VR chat players. Like when I'm in VR chat, things are really good. And like, you know, my, my, my old VR chat friends were there, but the moment I don't want to play VR chat anymore, there's a big chance they're not going to want to leave that. So it's like, I learned, that, is it, do you think it was like a term called like parallel relationships? Is that like a thing? I, Where it's like, if two people are on the same track, it's going to be pretty damn easy to be friends. Symbiotic? Okay. I'm not sure. But then the moment, the moment that like one starts to go in a different direction, it like, it loses a lot of convenience and it becomes ridiculously hard. All right. It sounds like it makes sense. Yeah. If yeah. it's not a thing, I think you've just discovered something. Yeah. I, yeah. It's yeah. like I guess it's like you know when you like you're when you and your buddies are leaving class, and then the conversation's great. You c you could walk with them to their class and then go to yours, but you're probably not gonna fucking do that. You're just gonna go to your the next class. A lot of friendships are based off of convenience. I mean, I had, yeah. this, I had the same thing happen like when whenever I was dating this last girl, and like whenever we first started dating, she was popular and she was getting like two or three thousand viewers, and like I was getting like eight thousand viewers, and it was like this was like kind of like normal. And then my stream completely blows up. I'm doing really well, and it it did change the dynamic of the relationship. Yeah. It was weird, and it's like now like you can never it's kind of like a weird thing for me right you can never go back and put the genie back in the bottle right because like now everybody that knows me knows me in the context of asmongold the very popular streamer right there there can never just be asmongold who lives at his mom's house who plays world of warcraft all day <laughs> you know and so it, it's like you, it's it's weird uh, isn't, because it, isn't that the really popular i thought that was <laughs> well, yeah, but like, but he didn't have the stream, you know, that's the difference. But yeah, not much has changed. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, and, and it is weird to like go back and like try and do that because, you know, personally, I would want to date like another girl that was like a streamer or something like that because it's something that I also like doing. And so if you were going and you were not doing any of that stuff, it would be really hard, like Tectone said, because it's like now you're doing something that's totally like, at odds with each other, right? Two people yeah. are. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it sounds super hard. I, I think another big thing is that, you know, I, I think there people are afraid to waste time. So I, I, I hear a lot about people, you know, like, I don't know if this person is the right person. Like, yeah. I don't want to spend these years. Whereas, like, when I was growing up, you sort of didn't have a choice, right? I think there's yeah. this idea that it you is can always is. meet someone else out there. And, and, you know, what it felt like to me was that, you know, you sort of had to make it work. Like, so coming from this culture of arranged marriages, yeah. really interesting talking to my parents about it. And I almost wonder whether ar arranged marriages should make a comeback. And were your parents uh, were arranged? No. So no? that was very scandalous because my dad really? was of one <laughs> caste and my mom was of another caste. And then my, my grandma. What, what does caste mean? So in uh, Indian culture, there that's are like still four. still a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sort of less so now, but uh -huh. um, so there are like four castes. There's like, and it's like kind of social stratification, basically. So my dad was from the priest caste, my mom was from the merchant caste, and then there's like the the warrior caste, which are like the nobles, basically. This is so cool. I've never heard of this ever. And then <laughs> Brahmin, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. My dad was a Brahmin. Yeah. And then, um, and then there's the laborer caste. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And and so. My dad, you know, w when he was like, you know, I he went to to my mo my grandmother and he was like, you know, I met this girl, and then when she found out that he was like, a, she was of a different caste, she's like, you're not marrying her. Wow. And then he said, you know, that's fine, like like because I guess you have to have parental approval back in 1950 in India. It is what it is. Um, but 1970 actually, and then but he was like, you know, y'all can you get to decide if I'm gonna marry her, right? You know, if you say no, but I'm certainly not gonna marry anyone else. So either I'm not gonna be married or it's her. So he kind of played. Smart. He played Chad Chicken. And yeah. Sick. <laughs> yeah. So they ended up getting married, and and you know. Wow. And then they had me. I, I mean, I guess that, like yeah, you're right, because like an arranged marriage, like it sounds pretty bad, but you gotta imagine you don't have to worry about going out on dates. You don't have to worry about finding anybody else. Like you don't have to worry about is this the right person? It doesn't matter because this is who it is. Problem solved. Yeah, and I, I think there's this idea that you make it work. So I think yeah. like what I hear from people is like, you know, if it's not working, I'm going to find something better. 
mm -hmm. as opposed to being made to make it work. And nowadays, by the way, people in arranged marriages, they, they still go on dates. So, like, things have advanced. That's probably good. Now it's actually a little bit, it's almost like, you know, in, in, in America, it's like you date for a while and then you meet the parents. Yeah. In India, it's just the other way around. You meet the parents first and then you start dating. Okay. And then if it works out and y'all like each other, then you get married. Wow. Okay. So they just flip them around. It actually works okay. out pretty well. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I had no idea that was even a thing. But, yeah, I guess so that makes sense. Matchmakers are making a comeback in the U.S. Actually, are you kidding me? No. Oh my I, god. I hear about this stuff. Wow. And not just for like people who are like East Asian or South Asian. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, there are like matchmakers and stuff like out in South Beach and New York and. And those are just people who like introduce people to each other too. Yeah, like you like go to someone and you pay them to like find you a partner. That's what I did for soda. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> yep, there you go. I was just what waiting you, for What you find? Tell me about Yeah, I got, I got soda pop and a girlfriend. Uh, uh, name's Vebe. It's working out really great. So, you know, he thanks me every day for it, actually. It's insane. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, um, he totally does. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, no, I, I think it's really not a surprise. And, and you're right. I think it's probably like that, the culture of abundance, right? Where it's like, it's simultaneously feast and famine. You have all these people that you can look at, but none of them are talking to you. And it's just, I, I, I think like that whole Instagram, social media, especially with like all the filters and stuff. And, you know, you see somebody, I mean, I'm going to be real. I've been to TwitchCon. I've met some of these people. They do not look like the way they do on the internet. And that's just how it is. I'm sure, sure maybe people might think about me, right? I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Tactone, I, is, Tactone is way taller than I thought he was. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Dude, I feel the same way about me. Uh -huh. Because my camera angle is so good. Uh -huh. And then I get off the camera and I see myself in the mirror and I'm like, why the fuck don't I look like as good as I do on my camera, bro? It drives yeah. me insane. I, I, I didn't even mean to set it up that good, but my camera is just so insane. I just, it, it's giving me like a weird, uh, maybe body dysmorphia is a similar thing to it, but like for myself as well as like every single human being around. Because you're right, nobody looks like how they look on stream at all. Yeah. Nobody. I would say, actually, I mean, you look the same. Dude, I was just thinking about that because I feel the opposite way you do. Like, I'll be watching my VOD and see myself on camera. I'm like, oh my god, that's what I fucking look like. And I'll have like a like a 15 minute, like, I'm like, oh my god. And then it's fine. Well, that's why you've got oh. your jaw locked too, right? You're oh, yeah. There, yeah. Yeah, my muscle twitches. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. What? So I have this problem that I developed from uh, being on camera. Where especially like on our group streams, like a lot of chat will be like analyzing my face like, oh, Emmy looks upset or whatever. So I would be oh, very so self-conscious about how I hold my face. And because of that, my jaw muscles would be so tense that I develop these like twitches, like my lips will like twitch. That sounds uncomfortable. Yeah. I don't even no. like really notice it, but like people. Neither do I. Well, I'll like see some clips of it. Like my lip will like do a weird thing, but yeah. whatever. And now, a word from our sponsors. FitBot is an app that helps you create a personalized workout unique to your needs, fitness level, and all the equipment you already own. If you caught the recent OTK Liftathon, you may have noticed my incredible strength. While that <laughs> wimp Mizkiff was on the ground crying like a baby, Asman, Emru, and I were in the best shape of our lives. How you might ask? With FitBot. It learns from your previous workouts and adapts as you improve using advanced AI technology. You don't use a paper map to read directions or a landline to make calls. So why are you still using old, outdated workout plans that haven't been customized to work for you? FitBot is the ultimate workout buddy that can help you keep track of exactly what you need to do to get in shape, whatever your goals may be. Whether you work out in the weight room of your living room, FitBot has you covered with over 1,400 demonstration videos. And there's no better time to level up your fitness habit. Try FitBot today. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app free at fitbod.me forward slash steak and eggs. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M E slash steak and eggs. We gotta get all y'all to like do yoga. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love yoga. And so, so, so I, I wanted to ask you about that because, like, obviously now we're we're in a place where we're using these smartphones. You've got these AIs. You have like these massive technological apparatuses. But I think that whenever we talk the first time, you really made a big emphasis, and I think you do put a big emphasis on going back to basics of meditation, yoga, and like that physical learning kind of. And do you think that's something that like more people can benefit from? 
hundred percent, man. So, really? so that, that like I, I think that. So like you kind of said, a lot of what we get from technology is like empty calories. Okay. Right? So even simple stuff, like the way that all of us are sitting right now is wrong. Like the way that we're sitting, like is not how we're supposed to sit. How we're supposed to sit. So if you want to sit up straight, okay. right? So there's a really, I don't. Uh, really. <laughs> I'll do it though. No, no, no. So, so right. when, well, let's talk about this for a second. Okay. When you yeah. say, yeah. I don't. Yeah. Why not? Because I'm so goddamn comfortable. It's crazy. Okay. So, so I I if you're comfortable, then that's totally fine. Yeah. But this implies that sitting up straight is not comfortable. Oh, for sure. It's bad. That's because we have never taught how to sit up straight. Okay. So if you guys okay. want to sit up straight, there's one really easy principle. All right. Your knees should be lower than your hips. Oh, what the hell? I don't think the couch lets me do that. I'm too big. This, exactly. Like, so oh. the reason that you hate sitting up straight is because no furniture is designed for you to sit up straight. So I'll yeah. teach you all something cool. I'm okay? a freak. So you guys know okay. like, so, uh, uh, okay, so I'm going to sit like this. So this is easy for me to sit up straight. You guys may not be able to do that. Uh, what I'll you need do to it. do. No problem. Is, is if you sit, if you sit on a, if you sit on the cushion. Okay. Oh, on the cushion. But, but put your, put, yeah, like that. I got it. Yeah. Half right. Half. So half and half is right. Good job. And notice what happens to your back. It doesn't feel weird or it does? It doesn't feel weird anymore. So isn't that weird that sitting up straight no longer feels weird? Okay. Right? So this is like, a, there's a really simple test that you can also do where if you sit at the edge of your chair and you put your feet out in front of you and you cross your legs, you'll, your back will naturally be straight. So, so edge of the chair, feet Yeah, so scoot back just a little bit. There you go. Like this? Yeah. Does that feel better? I mean, you, you need to sit on pillow because you're okay. somewhat tall too. So I think, I mean, how does it feel to sit up straight? Feels nice. Feels all right, yeah. No, 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 you need to scoot the, oh, the thing. the pillow. Okay, yeah. Fine. And you notice the difference now? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I can feel it in like my lower back kind right? of. Right, so, so this yeah. is where, and it's not your fault that you hate sitting up straight. Yeah, it's I don't because, know. because you just can't. You, you I'm an know. ogre. Not, you're not an ogre. <laughs> just, it, it's just human sized furniture is too small. Well, maybe you're an ogre. <laughs> <laughs> Not human. Yeah. You know, so I, I think there's a lot of stuff about like physical health and even like mood and stuff is like related to how we sit and yeah. and like you know there's studies that show that tai chi and yoga are like beneficial for mood. Yeah. Um, and so there's like a lot of stuff that I think that like you know you got to got to clean out your place. You got to eat healthy. You know, and it's not like you can't eat junk food from time to time. But that's good. You know, like vegetable, like you know, we'll we'll figure out. I, I feel like there's I I want to get you to eat fruits and vegetables very That's strongly. What thought too. We tried. Yeah. Yeah, we tried. Well, to be fair, I like lemons. I'm totally fine eating lemons. Absolutely psychotic. Yeah. Wh what is what is wrong? What what is it about <laughs> fruits and vegetables that makes it hard for you to eat them? Number 1, they ain't nuggets. And number 2, let's see. Wh why do I not like them? I don't really like the taste. I don't like the texture. Um, I think that's probably the main thing. Like it's so taste, taste and texture. Texture is a big thing for me whenever I eat food. Like, for example, I don't like the texture of anything more than well done steak. And I know I sound like a complete animal whenever oh, I I've, say I've seen your steak cooking videos. Yeah. So, but, but to me, that is the pinnacle, right? I love that. It tastes so good. And uh, luckily, it's only $2. And uh, it's, you know, that, that's great. And so the reason why I don't eat more of it, more vegetables and stuff like that, is because it just simply doesn't taste that good doesn't taste as good as a steak yeah so this is where like you know i know it's kind of a weird question but like why why is it hard to do things that don't feel good or take eat things that don't taste good the truth is because i lack the discipline and ability to do so i used to do things that were bad for me just simply to exercise my ability to have self-control i used to do this all the time and uh or like what for example I'll, like hit myself yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And, and I used to do this all the time. And uh, I, I don't really do it anymore, right? I had a one time, I almost think I gave myself a concussion uh, from like uh, playing this game. And so that was the end of that. But uh, other, otherwise, yeah. And, and like, so it, it's a, a lack of physical and like self discipline. That's, that's really the reason. Like, there's no excuse for it. So, I, I, interesting thing. There's no Sanskrit word for. for mm, 
motivation, really. There's a word for discipline, sort of. Uh -huh. But I, I think that in, in my experience, discipline is sort of like this boogeyman term where there are all kinds of problems that if you're not able to do something, you'll call it a lack of discipline. Uh -huh. So I'd say that 95% of people that I've worked with, they'll come in and they'll say, I'm not disciplined or I don't have enough willpower. Yeah. But oftentimes there's like some other problem. The simplest of which is that they weren't taught how to. And in the same way that, like, for example, if you say, I don't like fruits or vegetables, like, yeah. so maybe there is a condition called ARFID, which is, a, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I forget exactly, restricted feeding disorder or something, yeah. um, where people, like, they can't tolerate, like, different textures. So there's something going on with their brain where, like, if you eat a food that is not, like, a chicken nugget or a french fry, like, it doesn't. It tr it's triggers like signals of like this is dangerous and we want. I remember you told me about that and it was like a really eye opening experience because I had had kind of like it's almost like a fight or flight thing. Yeah. And it's like I don't know what it is, but man, I eat some stuff. Uh, -uh nope, not gonna happen just because of the texture. And and so I, I mean I, I think that when you say like you're not disciplined enough, I think that there's a lot of times where it, you know I just wonder also about circumstances and stuff. Like yeah. I wonder what would happen to you if we went and we stuck you in an ashram like in India. Uh -huh. Like I I don't think that you would starve. Like I think you would be okay. Actually. Oh, I survive. I do whatever I need to do. Right. It's like whenever we uh you know they had that big snowstorm. Oh, we had no power half the time. No no uh AC or no heat, but it was fine. I would. And you know what the craziest thing about it was is that I was happy the whole time. It's almost like whenever there's like hardship or stress, I feel more at ease or like more relaxed. Does that happen to either of y'all? Oh yeah, one million percent. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I, yeah I'm, I'm like, I'm actually less stressed whenever things are more stressful. Yeah, like for me, for example, like I, this happened just this morning, I usually have a bunch of long-term goals that I want to accomplish, but I'm realizing I've accomplished all of them and I don't know what my next one is. And even though, like, before it was, like, paying back the government, like, pay back your taxes, I'm, like, there. And now I don't know what the next goal is. So it's, yeah. like, that's, like, it's so freaky in my brain to realize, like, what do I want? Because I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, so I think this is the kind of stuff that is, like, in, in the empty calories of today's society. Like, we're not taught how to find our purpose in life. Yeah. But there's, like, formulas for this, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're saying, I don't know what I want. Yeah. I'd say that then that's that's actually that question is half the problem because it's not about what you should do next or what purposes is not what you should what you want. So the fulfilling of desires is always going to be temporary. You can eat as many cookies as you want to. You can eat a cookie today. You can be satisfied. Desire for the cookie is going to come back tomorrow. Yeah. That's so desire. Problem. And what's really interesting, right, is here you are talking about, OK, like when I'm fighting for survival, mm -hmm. I feel less stressed. So when your mind is focused towards something and that's not even really a goal. It's not something, or it's a, it may be a goal, but it's not something that you want. Mm. No one is like, I want to be stuck in a snowstorm. And yeah. there's, there's something <laughs> about the way that our mind functions when we, are, when we have a purpose that actually is like, even if things are objectively worse, we feel calmer. We're like, our mind is like tranquil and functional. Whereas like, especially in the streaming world, there's like all these metrics, right? And I got 20,000 concurrence yesterday. Yeah. And today I got 18. Dying streamer. Dying. <laughs> and then the one person uh -huh. says, you're washed up. I knew it. Yep, I knew it. He was right. And well, the thing is, like to me, like, because I've thought a lot about this, about this, like it's a phenomena where, you know, whenever like a disaster is happening or something like that, I will feel more at ease. And I think that it's more. And I, I don't know if this is like a legit thing, but I never think about the future. I don't think about what's going to happen at some point. Like, it's one of the only times in my life where I can actually live in the here and now. And, like, you can just simply exist extemporaneously. And it feels so good. And it's something that you hardly ever get the opportunity to do. I can't do that. I can never live in the now, ever. Well, I'm that, old. That's, you, you can whenever the fucking, the, 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 uh, there's no power. And that's uh, true. you're in, it, it's like freezing in the house and you're, you know, yeah. like you've got a glass of water next to you and there's ice over it and you've got like 10 blankets and you're just trying to survive. Yeah. Then you're thinking about the now. And, and I feel good because I'm not thinking about, oh, what's going to happen whenever I get older? You know, am I really, you know, am I on the right path? Like what's going to happen in 10 years? And, you know, all these things like, well, these don't these don't exist. Right. Because you just simply exist extemporaneously. And it's like almost 
I, I imagine it's almost like what being an animal is like. And it, it feels it feels good. Yeah, I mean, I that's like also it. what enlightenment is, is per- persistently existing, you know, this idea of enlightenment mm-hmm. like that these, like, you know, Buddha's teaching yeah. people to do. It's about existing in the present. So right. when w- the, if we look at it, like, if you look at the fundamental nature of suffering, like anxiety mm-hmm. is about stuff that hasn't happened exactly. yet. And regret is about stuff that happened in the past. Right. And it's really interesting because even when people say, I feel anxiety in the present, what they're usually anxious about is the future consequences of your yeah. present actions. Right. And and so the, this whole existing, I mean, that's why people meditate, because meditation is one of the simplest ways to exist in the present. Yeah, to just like acknowledge the present rather than like constantly thinking about something else. Because I'll, yeah. I'll realize that, you know, like I'll walk through my house and my house is like a, oh my, like I'm, t- <laughs> it's not good. But <laughs> I don't even know it. Like, I, I'm not even aware of it. Like, there will be, uh, like, for a while, there was, like, a dead rat in one of my rooms. And it's like, I just turn that off. And it, it's, it's like, I don't know how to, how to not do that. Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Because it's like, it's a very big strength that I have, but it also is a massive weakness in other ways, in other aspects of my life. How big is your house? It's like a five-bedroom, nice, uh, like, it, it, it's a working-class neighborhood yeah. house. I, I yeah. maybe you would have an easier time wanting to fix that stuff if you had like a if, if every issue in your house was like right next to you if you're like a smaller house or something I don't know oh, I don't know it depends like yeah. if I if I just don't have to look at something and even if I do have to look about it look at it I'm thinking about something else so it's like it, it's not even there and uh, it, it it's been like a massive advantage to me in, in life to be able to just kind of turn that stuff off but there's also a dark side of that too yeah, ignoring a dead rat is crazy. Yeah, that's... <laughs> that's fucking crazy. Yeah. It's just still there? No, I, I, I had to get rid okay. of it. Okay. How come? Uh, Because, like, so I was cleaning up my old room, and uh, it was, like, just there. And it's like, well, I, I didn't really even have... Uh, it wasn't... It, it's it's complicated, right? Because, so, like, the, the rat was there, and then, like, I stopped using that room, so I closed the door so it didn't smell bad. And then I went to clean it up a few years later, and then it was like halfway, like like melted onto a hard drive or something like Jesus that. Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah, it was pretty gross. But yeah, I mean, uh, it was like a thing where the house would get hotter in like the morning, and the rat it would like kind of like almost cook the rat a little bit, and it would wake me up with the smell, and so I would wake up at like seven in the morning every day. What do you think? I live like a fucking degenerate. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what's wrong with me. I. I have no idea. I mean, do you think something is wrong with you? You know what the worst part is? No. Yeah. I can Sick. No. Right, so, so and and that that that's where. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and, and, and I, I mean, I, I think this this is where you know we when we think about okay, is something wrong with me, right? So based yeah. on whose standard? So I I, I think uh, a big part of it is when you say that you don't have discipline. I I don't. I don't think that's going to work for you because it's not about discipline. It's a, what you need to do is cultivate wanting. Care about, yeah, like that's yeah, the thing. It's like right. I, so I was doing this a lot with like working out because it was like for a while, I was like, okay, I'm going to start working out. I'm going to start doing this. And then there would always be something that would get in the way of it and I wouldn't do it. And then I had to, you know, I had a come to Jesus moment where it was like, okay, look, you would make time for this if you wanted to do it. And it's like purely the fact that I'm not doing something because I don't care about it that much. And it's like, I think you have to get there to be able to understand that you are there <laughs> and to move forward. Yeah. So if you look at sustained behavioral change, it usually correlates with values. Yeah. So stuff that you care about. The really interesting thing is if you even analyze what you just said, mm-hmm. you value being able to be in control of your life. More than anything. Right. So, so true, that's what true wealth is freedom. Right. So so uh, all you need to do is uh, so even if you exercise, it's interesting because how did you back end your way into caring about exercise? It's not actually discipline. Yeah. You convinced yourself that, OK, like this is a problem of of a lack of freedom. I'm not actually in control of my own actions. I had to take muscle relaxers because of uh, like tension. And I thought exercising more would make it to where I wouldn't have to rely on that. Yeah. Yeah. So if there's some kind of consequence or what what people can do, there's this technique that, y- you know, will using our coaching program called motivational interviewing where we teach people 
how to discover what their values are. Right. And if you like clarify what your values are, you'll see like some kind of pro progress in terms of your life because it's this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Everyone thinks that they're disciplined. I mean, not disciplined. Uh -huh. but it's not. It's not that you're not disciplined. There's a solution. You don't have to become disciplined. You need to just really figure out what you care about, and then the yeah. future starts aligning. Right. So it's not about like what's your next goal or what do you want. It's what do you care about. And people yeah, think I'm true. a psycho because I say I don't care about the dead rat. But what I really care about is playing video games and doing my stream. Yeah. And ah, it, it, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, no, I mean, I think that makes sense, right? Yeah. So. My problem is, why is there things about myself that I don't like and they're fucked up, but I cannot change them? Like, for example, I think my humor is really fucked up. There's this video of Gordon Ramsay online telling people to kill themselves. And I think it's so funny. And I don't know why I think it's so funny. Or like uh, AI Donald Trump playing Fortnite with Joe Biden. Well, that one is funny. That's okay, so right. have you seen the Gordon Ramsay thing? No. I'm gonna send it to you. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so l let's start by understanding. Okay, how does a human being change? Wanting to change, acceptance. No. Okay. So wanting to change. So th there are a lot of people out there that I'm sure want to exercise more. Right. Right, so like if you want to understand why you can't change, you have to start by understanding, okay, how does a human being change? That's Acceptance true. of what? Sounds like something you learn on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you need to accept? I think weird shit is funny. What's wrong with that? It off puts other people when I laugh at Gordon Ramsay. Okay. Oh. So I mean. That's, I mean, shit, I don't know. Right, so, so I, what I'm hearing is that you should change. Yes. But, I mean, that, it's easy to explain why you don't do things that you should do. Like, all of, like, the should, the whole, if you even think about the word, should. By definition, if you should do something, that means you're not doing it. Right. Shoulds are all the things that you don't do. Right. So, what I'm hearing from you is that you don't actually have a good reason to change. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if, you don't have a, if you don't have a good reason to change, then you're not going to change. No. Yeah. All right. Hey, fuck it then. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. I definitely agree. I mean, mo most people, the reason they don't change is because deep down they don't want to, or what the was more common is they're conflicted. There's a part of you that wants to change, and there's a part of you that doesn't want to change. Mm. Right? I, th I think your sense of humor is not something that you choose. It's hard, because there's, there's some shit, like, for example, there's this whole meme in the, the Genshin Impact community where... Paimon was considered emergency food. And I thought it was the dumbest fucking shit. But like millions of people thought it was hilarious. And I would just I would just get angry. I was like, how the fuck are you losers laughing at this shit? What is emergency food? Oh, so there's this little creature called Paimon. Yeah, yeah. And I the know. main character would joke about if I were to starve, I would eat you as my emergency rations. Got and it. I thought it was so fucking stupid. And I didn't get why people were laughing at it so much so that it pissed me off. Harambe what? was the same for me. Harambe? Yeah. Did you think it was funny or wasn't funny? It was not funny at all. You didn't think Dick's out for Harambe was hilarious? I felt I that way about the knuckles. Do you know the way? Do you know, Do you know the way? I remember, Harambe. oh my God. I was at Target and there was this woman there and she had like a five-year-old and a six-year-old. And they were saying it back and forth to each other at the Target. And I just saw her and I realized that she was having the worst day of her life. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> I don't know. It's just it, it's weird because like uh, there, there are so many of these things that I think people never really a ask themselves questions for. Or people try to look for solutions for it online. And uh, I, I guess like, you know, to kind of like wrap things up, like what would you say for like advice for people who aren't able to like solve these problems themselves? Like, you know, keep watching, uh, you know, Instagram compilations of you know, cool guys walking away from explosions to try to motivate <laughs> yourself to not do stuff. Like, what, what, should, what should they do? So uh, what should they do if what's the goal? To improve their life. Start working out, do the thing that they want to do, capitalize on a passion, something like that. Talk to the girl. Yeah, so I, I'd say it starts with, like, the reason that we don't improve our lives is because we're trying to improve them based on other people's standards. There it is. Right. So I think the first most important step is that there's a ton of stuff that you should be doing. Mm -hmm. Your parents, these the hypothetical people that you could be dating, yeah. Internet strangers, what have you. But like the real question is, like, what do you want? Right. And, and this is where things like I think it's it's a lot of like personal introspective work. And this is what's happening in our society is we're by definition as stimu as external stimulation increases, 
we are losing the capacity for introspection. And there's like, so the less, like if you think okay. about, okay, what yeah. do I want in life? Not what I've, what I've, what have I been conditioned to want, but what do I actually care about? Right. And, and the more that we literally spend time looking at external things, like, because where do we discover our wants, our desires? Where do they come from? Yeah. They come from what we see, right? Okay. Like now again, game developers have figured this out. We're going to give Asmund Gold, Emeru and Tectone 72 hours of access for this new game. And then mm. someone else's yep. sensory inputs are going to be bombarded with everyone playing order to Honkai star rail or whatever yeah, it is. It is now yeah. it's, right? That's a good game. So I, I think it's it's kind of interesting, but I have this this really great exercise, which is really painful, which is that I tell people, if you don't know what you want in life, stare at a wall for one hour. Okay. Just what stare at a wall. Fuck? Just look at a wall. There it is. Don't gentlemen. do anything. And and just just you'll all kinds of stuff. It'll be really boring. It'll be really painful. But like by the end of it, like you may discover that you have this like inner voice. Yeah. And that's really what you need to cultivate if you want to make change, because making change is hard, and we can't overcoming the pain of change you're never going to do it for someone else you have to want it for yourself yeah right because we can make sacrifices if it's stuff that we care about what finally got asmund gold to get rid of the dead rat because he cared about it when it started to stink and wake him up and disturb the freedom of sleep yep so something has to take away asmund's freedom for him to do anything that's right and then if you want to do anything, what you have to do is think about, okay, how can I align this with my sense of freedom? Yeah, but be, try to be proactive about that. Yeah, that, yeah that's so just really, really think goal. about what you want and stop, like, forget about all the conditioning. Yeah, okay. And then move towards that. So even working out is not about I should look good. It's like, do you like the way that your body feels? Do you like the way that, do you, do you get anxious every time you take off your shirt if you go to the beach? Are you not able to enjoy the beach? Because you're embarrassed about the way that you, you look if you take off your shirt. Right. Those are reasons to change. That yeah. makes sense. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I'll be honest. The only reason I do it is, uh, I would do it at least, uh, is so I would look good on, <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, let's not get ahead of ourselves here, uh, is so I would look good on stream. It's like I feel great every day eating fast food and living like a degenerate. I feel so good all the time. And... How could I possibly, how could anything possibly be better, you know? But yeah, I would want to do it just to look better on stream or for some superficial bullshit reason, which is, you're right. It's not, it, it's, it's intrinsic, but it's not at the same time. Well, that sounds more intrinsic to me because it sounds like you care about it. Well, yeah, because I want to look better. I mean, if you I cared so much about what other people thought, I, I don't do. think you'd be living the life that you, you live I, now. Well, it, well it, it, there's, there are things that you care about and things you don't, yeah. right? And so, like, for me, one thing I cared about is, like, my teeth used to be messed up. And I didn't want my teeth to be messed up. But, like, at a certain point, I remember I, I wouldn't want people to know that I was so skinny. And then one day I just did a gardening stream. And I'm like, oh, fuck it. I'll just take my shirt off and have a shower on stream in front of everybody with a with a hose and you know that was kind of a turning point for sure so i, I think at a certain point it's like a rip the band-aid off situation is when you started your only fans <laughs> not, <yet. laughs> <laughs> not yet that's coming but anyway man i, I want to say thank you so much for coming on this thank show. you thank so you. much I, for having me this was a blast this was awesome I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it like i i've loved your content i've watched a lot of your videos you know obviously i've been on your stream before and i'm just so happy that you were able to come on and uh share a lot of your insight uh, likewise on this so much yeah and i so i much. consume a surprising amount of y'all's content as well so i'm I thank you so much man what happened well, where can they find you like what are you what are you doing now uh so we've uh, we don't stream quite as much but we still stream okay. on twitch and we also stream on YouTube, but most of the time I'm, I'm just uploading videos to YouTube uh -huh. that are a little bit more like educational and complete. Um, and so, yeah, we stream on Twitch and YouTube at healthy gamer underscore GG. Okay. It, and it's healthy gamer underscore GG on like YouTube too? On sure. Twitch. And then on, on YouTube, I think it's just healthy. Gamer. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So yeah, if you have guys have problems with anything gaming related or anything gaming lifestyle related, I think uh, Dr. K here would be a great resource. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Okay. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you all very much. Yeah, absolutely. And gentlemen, uh, it's going to conclude the episode. We're going to go ahead and do the uh, little Patreon extra stuff. But uh, thank you all so much for watching again. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, I guess we'll see you all in the next one. I need to say. Then you turn and you look at me. There's a
little glimmer that I can see A sparkle in your eyes It makes me realize All we need is you and me That Star Forge poster is so cool I never noticed that until I stretched really far back Wait, yeah. I've never seen That's that That's cool, look It's, it's, sta it's Steak and Eggs uh, What's the game called? Space Invaders Space Invaders So you'd know that if you're, if you're playing that instead of piano Wait, why's it got a penis on it? <laughs> <laughs> then you turn 